And going ahead, I would like to invite uh, Catherine Winkler, who's from Nova Scotia, Canada. She has been working together with educators uh, dedicated to peace, ahimsa, and justice. Uh, and uh, the motivation for a livable planet for all comes from students and teachers that she has encountered, as well as her six grandchildren, and of course, two who are on the way. So welcome, Catherine. Thank you very much, Scotty, and I'm hoping that you will start the slideshow. I may turn off my video at, at some point because of the instability. So if you start the slideshow, we can go ahead. Thank you. Welcome to all participants, far and wide. We are stretching peace around the globe today. Our borders are porous, like water. We can seep into each other's streams of understanding and flow together. So the first slide, if you continue on the next one, please. The next slide, Gadi, thank you. I'm so grateful that I can enter this space and be with my sisters and brothers in India and across Turtle Island. I request all the panelists uh, present here to please uh, turn your cameras off as some of the friends that we have today with us have a bad internet connectivity. So if I may request everyone to turn their videos off except for the person who is uh, delivering the session. Uh, Sahil Singh, if I may please request you to turn your camera off. Thank you. I may turn mine off too, Gadi. What do you think? Yeah, if you have a bad connection, I guess turning it off is a better option. Okay, thank you, everyone. So again, I'm grateful that I can enter this space and be with my sisters and brothers in India and across Turtle Island. In the present and also in memory, I have an artwork here from Shiopur from 2011. Here on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean in Nova Scotia, I bring my greetings from this territory, the unceded traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq people. If you can enter your territory or your city, please take a moment so that we can virtually share a namaste, a masalama, and a jai jagat. My name is Catherine Winkler. I'm a re retired teacher and, as Gotti mentioned, a grandmother of six grandchildren and two on the way. I consider myself a feminist abolitionist under construction, acknowledging that climate justice and racial justice are feminist principles for nonviolence and peace. And I would like to dedicate this talk to two teachers that you see here, Joan Smith and Karen Hudson, both involved in the projects that I'm presenting. Um, Three key ideas that I hold dear are interdependence, imagination, and commemoration in educating for peace. And I hope to touch on them today. But if you go to the next slide, please, Gadi. Next slide. The next slide is a winter scene, just to remind you, as it is spring now, that change is possible. Uh, now we have birds making nests outside. And the next slide, please, Gotti. The next one will be a bit of a surprise. These are kitchen tools. Interdependence is interactive. If we were together, we would probably be doing a cooperative exercise right now. Um, and collective skills and co-creation is essential in peace education. No one, not one of these projects would have succeeded without many hands and hearts working together. So if you take a look at all these things, for each of us, just like our students, our skills and contributions aren't static, change, they change, but together we can cook up some wonderful plans. So just for fun, imagine yourself as a kitchen utensil or tool. Which would you be? How can you describe your way of acting for peace? Are you perhaps agitating for peace, which is my title? And if I would add mine today, then uh, which of these instruments that I relate to would be the whisk. Adding some fun and play in our pursuit of peace while the world weighs heavy on our shoulders can be a source of strength. So do you measure your energy? Do you like to heat things up? Do you mix, support, great, get rid of the, the big problems and sift them through? Just add your, your idea. And next slide, please. We'll continue. Thank you for participating. 
Here are the themes and here are the projects. I'm going to begin with the first one, the peace poppies. Peace poppies, the next slide, please. We work for peace in and through relationships. And rather than upholding a culture of domination and exploitation, our way to peace leads through love and compassion. Art and beauty can render us sensitive, sensitive to this interdependency and how it shapes our futures. On a practical level for teachers, for all of us, find your mentors, share your work in any way that you can. Next slide, please. We hand out peace poppies at rallies. Um, and this is a way for Nova Scotia Voice of Women for Peace to share our dedication to demilitarize, decarbonize, and to disarm the world. Next slide, please. This is some information that we handed out at the most recent uh, activity. And Najaji mentioned how the world continues to arm itself. We don't budget for peace. We need to budget for peace. We're budgeting for war. And this is with particular against Lockheed Martin. Canada is buying 88 F-35 fighter jets. The F-35 is produced by Lockheed Martin, which also um, built the AOLA um, gay that dropped the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima. But uh, one fact about these fighter jets, they have nuclear capability and they carry four barrel guns that can shoot 3,300 rounds per minute. Very sobering thought. Next slide, please. Does it seem like an impossible task to disarm the world? Uh, I threw this in because I thought it was a teachable moment. Our uh, Charka, our spinning wheel, and Voice of Women for Peace is a crochet hook. But this, uh, I, I just couldn't give up, give up this opportunity of having uh, these juxtaposed images. Um, on the bottom of my slide, I made a typo instead of sinner, instead of spinner, I put spinner. So my apologies to Boris. Next slide, please. The White Poppy campaign began in 1933 by women's, the Women's Cooperative Guild as a definite pledge to peace that war must not happen again. And this Peace Poppy campaign has continued around the world and continues to this day by peace activists. How would these women respond to the news they hear now? Media spreading stories about predicting a third world war as families in both Russia and Ukraine are again losing loved ones. I also wanted to mention that Lockheed Martin's profits have already risen by 20% since the war in Ukraine. And over the period in Afghanistan, they made over a thousand percent increase in profits. Next slide, please. We place these wreaths in memorial to victims of destruction. And next one. Next slide, please. A back one, <laughs> sorry, Kelly. <laughs> so the last image is of our celebration, our Peace Poppy celebration. If you could go to the last slide, please. Thank you very much. And we've covered a cannon here with a shroud, with a hand knit shroud. And this is on a day of remembrance. And I just want to um, acknowledge your Dr. Afua Cooper, she's wearing the purple headdress, and she spoke at this event. She is the co-author of the Lord Dalhousie Report on Slavery and Race, published by the University of Dalhousie here. And Voice of Women for Peace read this report online. And this leads into the next project. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, when we read this, we, we individually responded asked ourselves, how do we respond to Black Lives Matters in our work? And as an educator, I learned um, about the erasure of history in Canada, our history of history of slavery. And this led to the hashtag 1792 project and the second theme of imagination. Next slide, please. So the 1792 project began as an art installation. And it, it, the question was, how do we bring history to life? This is a, an erased history. 1792, the year 1792, on the 15th of January, 15 ships left from Halifax Harbor, which is here on my doorstep, literally, uh, to Sierra Leone. And it is the, the largest single exodus of African descendants returning to the continent of Africa. And this journey was never taught. 
And as an immigrant myself who came on a boat, I felt connected to the story. My family left behind their roots, were uncertain of what lay ahead. There were challenges and disappointments. So the question we wanted to raise and invited participants was how, what message would you send to those who left? They were self-liberated individuals who came to Nova Scotia after the American Revolution. Um, promises that were given were broken here. A land was not given and the promise of liberation was not fulfilled. So the journey was undertaken. It's a journey of courage and also of failure of community. And uh, as is war and armament and uh, racism that continues. And this failure of community and government to provide safe haven uh, was the fuel for this, this project to challenge this history and to commemorate it. And so we invited students to participate and it has grown as a project. Next slide, please. And Gadi, you can just scroll through these slides now uh, because uh, that, that's fine. Just keep going. There are activities for students at the site. There's a book of letters. So we're asking for over a thousand letters by students. We're at 700. Keep going. That's great. <laughs> students participated by making ships. So it was very expansive and dynamic and it grew and it will continue across Canada. We've asked um, local municipalities to issue proclamations, which they have done out of the 49 over about 30 have. We did art projects related to it. We printed flags. Yes, go ahead and scroll through. We posted them on the anniversary of the, on the 15th of, Jan of January of the departure. And then we also had a, a celebration on March 11th, which commemorated the arrival of the ships in Sierra Leone, which uh, the mayor of, of Freetown, uh, she joined us virtually on a live stream. So beautiful works, beautiful participation, and a plan to continue, because these are conversations around racism that we all, and, and erased history that we all need to, to pursue. Key to the success of the program was consultation with community leaders. Dr. Lynn Jones, in particular, who had worked with children on a book, Ours for Reparations, that became the core document. None of this would have happened without Principal Karen Hudson and her students, who believed in the importance of this 230th anniversary and bringing history to life. I'm just going to quote the um, Nova Scotia's union president, Quote, because teachers are viewed as moral and social leaders within our community, we must embrace now wholeheartedly the work of tearing down anti-Black racism. It cannot wait any longer. So I'm going to ask you just to move on to the last project. I uh, love this artwork by the students. Oh, right here. I, I do want to share that last quote. And that is that these two pieces have got to come together for me to make a really good impact. It's good to educate, but if we don't share, what good is it? And this is by a descendant of Black loyalist, Mary Desmond, who lives here in Nova Scotia. Thank you, Gary. And the next slide, please. The last project I'd like to bring to you is called Peace Not Bombs. And uh, this project, go ahead, is on the theme of commemoration. How do we bear witness to suffering and loss? This project is a commemoration. Fatma, one of the women who was a key organizer, reminds me that, quote, I cannot stop every bomb, but I can bear witness to the shattering of dreams and lives and bring attention to the causes of injustice. So this is one of the original works to commemorate the 38 children who died uh, in Yemen, children who were killed by a bomb attack by a Lockheed Martin bomb on a school trip. And how do we work with this history? Uh, Canada is presently involved in purchasing those fighter jets. We must make this connection between defunding militarism and uh, to end the violence of state aggression. So the next slide, please. Nova Scotia Voice of Women does not have the answers to the endless armed conflicts that continue to plague the planet, but through commemoration and an ethic of love and care, we hope viewers will explore the connection between arming the world and the suffering of families. This project took place virtually through the mail. We mailed pieces of cloth out, 
uh, the feathers on the bird that are on the banner have the names of the children in Arabic and English. We got together once in Halifax, and this is a, a picture of us sewing. On the right, Maria Jose is sewing hearts onto the, the cover for the, the banner uh, during the time that we were stitching the uh, remains of children uh, were found at a residential school in British Columbia. Next, please. On, so we're using this now as a uh, as a way to connect military spending and mourning. Uh, here is on the right, uh, we hung the banner in front of the public library. On the left, we handed out postcards of the banner asking participants to send them to, uh, to politicians. Next slide, please. And the banner has uh, a schedule of, of displays as starting at one of the universities here. And we hope to engage with people who come and take a look at it. And you can see people have white pop, peace poppies in their hands. Next slide, please. And just scroll through, Gary, please. And here's an example of the feathers and uh, the and here's the banner as it is complete, surrounded by squares that women made, and each one of those squares has a story to tell. Next slide, please. So I, I'd like to end here. Um, the voice of truth, the voice of peace education works when we act together. Explore the truth, create cultures of ahimsa and understanding in our classrooms. Here in Canada, First Nations women and girls were thought of as disposable not only their ideas, but their words, their language, their bodies. The truth is that they are the life givers, the storytellers, the history keepers, the prophets and the matriarchs. And I'm quoting from the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Report, the fallout of colonialism is like a fallout of a nuclear war, a winter without light. Finally, I hope that these ideas of interdependence, imagination and commemoration are a spark in the light of your work, ending with Canadian icon Margaret Atwood, where she says, a word after a word after a word is power. I thank you for your words today, for this opportunity, and the power of peace that we share. Send me a message and I'll send you a white peace poppy. Thank you very much.